questions? Well, just disappointed. I mean, we had the game one, and, you know, we made some of the same mistakes we've made two or three times this year in um, critical situations. And uh, I thought we played incredibly well offensively and incredibly poor defensively and give them a lot of credit. They made some plays. Uh, we were up five, six. It seemed like we had it in control. And, and uh, you know, we just didn't rebound the ball like we could have or should have, especially under some situations. So uh, is what it is. It's, uh, it's a shame because I thought we played some of our best offensive basketball of the year. So whatever questions you got, I'd love to take them. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions from the media now, starting with Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press. Chris, go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask your question. Thanks. Hey, Tom. Um... You know, in, in those final two minutes, obviously, uh, when you go back up five there and they had taken the lead, what, what happened with the foul situations there? Uh, you guys got, obviously, they got to the line a couple times. Was that their, their driving and getting contact? Or were there some things defensively maybe that, that you didn't like? Well, there were some things I didn't like defensively. I thought we had some tendencies that we talked about, who goes right, who goes left, and then, and then they miss fouls, and then they get their free throw rebounds, and so it was just a cluster of things that happened. And like, I think it was in the last minute and a quarter. I don't know. Uh, I really don't have the timeline to it. But uh, we didn't deserve to win at the end the way we handled that uh, situation. And uh, we let him with a left-handed guy drive left, a right-handed guy drive right, and didn't get a couple of key rebounds. And, uh, and you lose games. I mean, we're, we said all along we, our margin for error is very slim. And uh, and yet I say that when by that first half and even part of the second, I thought we moved the ball so well and and really played um, really good basketball. And uh, you know we made a couple mistakes right before the half. We're supposed to switch. We didn't switch, and they hit a shot. I mean those things. You know you, you don't have many margins for error when you're uh, you know just a good basketball team, which we are. Next, we get Andre Monroe from. Uh, yeah, Cole. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Andre Monroe with Antar Institute. Coach, you and Gabe Brown they had sort of a heated exchange going into the halftime. Can you tell us what that was about? <laughs> you guys are beautiful. Yeah, he missed a, a play, and I told him, and he walked away, and so I told him to come back. I mean, <laughs> I, we went through this a couple of years ago. Um, a game like that, that's the question you're going to ask me. Uh, I guess I'll answer it because the media has the right to ask whatever question, but, um, you know, we'll get him in here and you can ask him. I mean, it was, it was a normal nothing. It's just that uh, this day and age, everything's something. It was over a missed, uh, a missed switch that we had talked about. Next question from Kyle Austin. Tom, last play of regulation, wondering what you were looking for in that play with uh, Aaron shot and how that played out. Well, I was looking for Aaron to get to the basket where he could either get fouled. And uh, I think I think we played Aaron so much, he was just uh, run down. You know, Josh was hurt a little bit at halftime, and we just kind of grinded both those guys, and uh, he just didn't have enough legs. But the deal was to just take it in there and pump fake and get fouled, and uh, we didn't do that, so... It was probably a poor play call on my part. Next question to Matt Charbonneau. Tom, I, you know, you talked about some of the defensive mistakes late in the game. With the way you guys played late and some of those big wins late in the year, were you a little bit disappointed that that focus wasn't there at crunch time tonight? I really was. I uh, really was, uh, especially some of our key guys that it happened to. But... Uh, I think some of that was fatigue. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many minutes I played a couple of those guys, but I, I think uh, they did a better job of subbing. And, uh, you know, I mean, Aaron played 41 or two minutes, and, uh, and Josh played 35 or six minutes. And I think we had some fatigue in there. We had some different guys in there. And uh, I think that was part of it. Next, we go to Audrey Dahlgren from WLNS. Hey, Tom. The overtime period, the couple of possessions that you guys had, 
I guess, how detrimental were some of those just in the sense that Rocket has an air ball and then, um, you know, Langford goes one for one from the line and then you turn it over a couple of times. Just curious how you thought about the overall, uh, the overtime overall. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, for the game, we ended up with 12 turnovers and, uh, you know, we had done a pretty good job not turning the ball over. I think we had three or four at halftime. We had a couple of key ones there. We had a couple of uh, bad shots uh, that just didn't go in. Uh, you know, it's uh, nobody's trying to miss a shot. Um, we just didn't. Uh, maybe we just didn't uh, execute as well as we should have down the stretch. But uh, you're right. You know, we miss a free throw. I don't know what we shot from the line. It was probably pretty good. Uh, 16 for 18, and the poor guy misses one. And uh, and I'd like to say for Josh Langford, you know, um, unbelievable year. I mean, the kid gave me every single thing he had, and uh, I think it's uh, it's too bad that he had to go out that way because I thought we were a good enough team to win it. But I give Mick and his team credit because they were they were just a little tougher and. Uh, and those guards just kept driving the ball and driving the ball, and that's the way the game ended. Next question to Brendan Quinn. Hey, Tom, got to ask you, there were games, there were moments in this game where it seemed like you guys had amazing flow and things just looking great, and then there were other stretches where it just looked disconnected and disjointed, and did this all just feel like it was this season summed up in two hours yeah it's a that's a damn good question that's a and and i already think you answered it 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 did seem like it um we did some really good things we were moving the ball and then we got stagnant and quit moving the ball when the ball goes side to side to side as i think it was richard patino said about the third game of the year he, he had a stat on the on on how his team did when the ball moved uh, three times one time the other side the other side and i thought boy we made some unbelievable passing plays and uh, really did a nice job on some things and it got a little disjointed I, I, I would agree with that we uh, we were running out of gas a little bit um, and uh, you know we had some matchup problems because they went really small for a while and uh, we didn't handle that real well either we just kind of ran out of one extra body but uh, I'd say that's a good way to put it. You know, that's the way the season went. And uh, you just can't make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And that falls on me. You know, we got to do a better job of figuring out how to cut out or what to do or not turn the ball over, take a bad shot. Um, but nobody tried to miss any shots. It wasn't anything that anybody did. It's uh, just the way the game went. Next question back to Chris Solari. Tom, I wondered, uh, you mentioned about them going small with, uh, with Chuzang and uh, Jacquez. Uh, they, they obviously had, had their way at times. What, what was it that, that they were able to do, um, and in particular Chuzang, uh, in the second half and in overtime before he got hurt? Well, he just drove the ball, drove the ball, and drove the ball. I mean, uh, you know, he, he uh, strong kid goes right every time and we knew it and we didn't always stop it and uh you know Josh was a little bit shaken up at halftime his ankle and uh so I tried to play Aaron on uh Jaquez um more of the second half because he was hurting us in the first half and uh so I had to play Aaron at the four defensively and that hurt us a little bit too because uh, I thought he did a, a pretty good job for a while, and then just the lineup changes. We just had different guys in there. But for those two guys to get 50 points, um, we said that would be the game. It was the game. I thought Rocket did a pretty good job on Campbell. He hits that one big three. But I thought we did a pretty good job keeping him out of the lane and all the things we wanted to do. We didn't do a very good job keeping those other guys out, so give them credit. We have time for one or two more questions for Coach, if anyone has a question. If not, we will let Coach Izzo go. All right, we have uh, James Camp Camperoni. Go ahead and unmute yourself, James. 
Okay. Sorry if you touched on this earlier, Tom. Um, there was a, a missed box out on a free throw with about 37 seconds left. Um, Hurt in early January also. You can only teach us so much, I would imagine. Um, was that a missed box out for a shooter on that situation? And uh, how, how do you view that going into, into the post game now? Well, I, I think I know what happened, but I don't know for sure. So I, uh, I, uh, I'll reserve the right to, uh, look at the film, but, uh, there were some box outs on free throws throughout the year that hurt us, I think three times and or two times. If this was the third that hurt us, uh, 37 seconds. Um, but I, you know, I didn't exactly know what happened. I didn't know if it was a long one. Uh, you would know more than me because you get replay. I don't. So, um, it's, uh, tough to lose a game the way we lost it. Um, I really mean that. I had some guys that played their tails off. Gabe Brown was one of them. Marcus Bingham was one of them. Um, you know, we really played uh, extremely, extremely hard, but we we just didn't make the plays that mattered. I mean, Aaron played pretty good. I just, like I said, I think I wore him down a little bit. And, that's kind of the way we had it with our guards this year. We just didn't have enough depth at that position. All right, our final question goes to Chris Solari. I know you talked uh, about getting off the good starts in in the halves, and you obviously got it in the first half, but then the second half and then overtime in particular. Um, you know, that, the turnovers and everything that were, were going on there. I mean, could you sense it at, at that point that things were getting away from, from the guys in the beginning of overtime? Yeah, I could. I mean, uh, I thought we uh, we uh, we looked tired, we looked fatigued, um, and uh, you know we just didn't have. Uh, I mean, Aaron's our go-to guy, and uh, I mean he was worn out, and uh, so you know, like I said, they did a much better job of of uh, of. You know, moving guys around. They went when they went small. They moved guys around, and they had two guys that played a lot of minutes too. And and they missed some shots. You know, we just didn't get the rebounds. I mean, uh, those couple of turnovers, um, and a couple of missed rebounds. You know, really hurt us. But in general, um, it's been a hell of a year. And I would like to say to everybody, because I listen to student athletes or media or coaches. Um, I just want to take my hat off to Danny Gavitt and Joanne and Scott and all the people that gave us an opportunity to play. You know, last year we were sitting at home. We had thought we had a team that was capable of getting to a Final Four, and those guys didn't even get a chance. And uh, thanks to the incredible, I mean, I, to me everything was incredible, the facilities, the food, the treatment, the practice facilities. Um, I think it was maybe one of the greatest things that ever took place and uh, uh, you know sometimes even I because I'm on some boards malign the NCA and uh, different things but uh, I hope people realize just how big of an undertaking this was and how pleased my players were to get an opportunity to play especially the ones that didn't get that opportunity last year so uh, hats off to them thank you appreciate it Sorry, I'm not going to be staying here longer to enjoy it, but um, I think it'll be a hell of a tournament still because um, they've done everything you could possibly do in maybe the toughest times. And uh, you had to see the practice facility and how you didn't even have to go outside and bring in lunches to your room. And I just thought, uh, you know, some people are complaining about it. It makes me sick because... Uh, they did an unbelievable job, and I know my guys were happy as hell we got to play. And uh, so for that, I say thank you. For our fans, I say, you know, uh, I feel disappointed, feel like I let you down. And, um, you know, we're going to work on some things next year, probably this summer, that hopefully won't happen to us again over and over, and we'll see if we can do a better job of some of the things that did. And, uh, and yet I want to 
make sure we reiterate like like the coaches did and the team did to Josh. He gave us so much. He bounced back and did so many things. It was damn near incredible, the effort he put forth to come back and play after nobody gave him a chance to ever play. And uh, for that, I, I just want to make sure uh, all of our alums say thank you to him. So thanks a lot for everything. I'll see you later.